1915, the horrifying rumor that a Canadian soldier had been crucified to a barn caused outrage across the world. The story symbolized the brutality of the German army. After the war, the Germans claimed that Allied atrocity accusations were propaganda. But now, new evidence uncovers the real record of the German army and reveals the untold true story of the crucified soldier. The history of the First World War has traditionally been a history of trench warfare. The hardships endured by heroic troops, the massive losses sustained in futile campaigns. Conventionally, atrocities have not formed part of this history. Our image is of a war fought according to the rules, a gentlemanly war. But fresh research has revealed a darker side to this conflict. The story of the crucified soldier emerged from one of the fiercest battles on the Western Front. In April 1915, the Germans instigated a secret plan to capture the Belgian town of Ypres, which held huge strategic importance. Ypres and the salient, about five kilometers to the east, were the last parts of Belgium that were still in Allied control. And this was a war about territory and, and not an inch was going to be given up. Secondly, it was also the flank of the whole Western Front. And if the Germans theoretically broke through at Ypres, they could then turn it. We understood these positions were so important to the conduct of the war and they had to be held at all costs. Both sides had dug in. The war had become static, but the Allies held the inferior position. The Germans held all the high ground. The fact was we were under observation practically night and day from the left and the right flank. So we were under constant bombardment from all those three directions. Amidst great secrecy, the Germans had been preparing a revolutionary plan to break the stalemate. Poison gas. On the 22nd of April, signal flares coordinated the simultaneous release of chlorine gas from nearly 6,000 cylinders along a six kilometer front. When the German army released the poison gas, it really changed the rules of war. Up to that point, people obeyed the rules. It was almost a gentleman's game. This was now the first time ever that they had total war. The Allies were taken by surprise. They had no defense against chemical warfare. The French and colonial troops took the brunt of the gas. They fled and the line broke. On their flank, some 4,000 men of the 1st Canadian Division watched the disaster unfold. They had little experience of combat. They have to decide whether to run or fight. And they're seeing the French troops fleeing, they're panicking, they're watching this gas, which they have no defense against, and they're watching thousands of German infantry coming in behind. And to their credit, they stood and they said, we're not gonna move, and they formed in small groups and started fighting the Germans. They didn't really waver for a second. Uh, they believed in the uh, good of the British Empire, and this was one of those cases where you stood and fought. 
the Canadians prevented a breakthrough. Over the next two days of attack and counterattack, the fighting came out of the trenches and raged back and forth across the fields around Ypres. It was now that the shocking rumor about the discovery of a crucified soldier began to emerge. Even Jack Davis remembers hearing it. As far as I was concerned, or anybody else that I knew of, this was an unconfirmed rumour. But the rumour persisted. Some accounts said the soldier was crucified to a barn door, others to a tree. Most reports identified the unnamed victim as a Canadian sergeant. So many stories appeared to give the rumour substance. It spread like wildfire across the front. I heard tales of friends crucified on barn doors, of wounded men bayoneted whilst lying on the ground. Talk of atrocities makes me feel quite bitter against the enemy. What happens quite frequently in such lurid accounts is that there is a kernel of truth there, that a soldier was stabbed or something terrible did happen to him, but by the time he gets back to his comrades in his unit or, or in another unit, it becomes a full-scale crucifixion. A Canadian officer came in here the other day and stated that after an attack, he and his men found a man crucified in a barn. Fortunately, they caught four German soldiers in that barn too. I am thankful to say the Canadians killed all four out of hand. In many ways, some of the most lurid atrocity stories are what we would now call, I think, urban myths. Um, they are rumours spreading through both the population in Kharki, um, and soldiers start many of these stories, and amongst civilians, which are then subsequently picked up by the press. Was the story a myth? In 1915, few questioned its authenticity, and it swiftly became headline news around the world. German bayonets thrust 60 times into the body of a sergeant. Name of victim not yet known. Several men saw the corpse. Great sullen anger at the awful crime. During the war, the story of the crucified soldier came to symbolize German brutality. It was also a powerful weapon of propaganda and inspired Hollywood to make a film, now lost. This is a rare image from the Prussian Kerr. Even its title reflects the outrage the story provoked. Atrocity stories, of course, abounded during the war, but it was the worst possible atrocity, the worst thing that you could do to someone, crucify them. So it had tremendous impact. Even at the end of the war, the crucified soldier could still inflame public opinion. In January 1919, the Canadian War Memorials Exhibition opened at London's Royal Academy. The show featured artists who'd been commissioned by the Canadian press baron, Lord Beaverbrook. Their work recorded the contribution of Canada's forces at the front. This was the first blockbuster exhibition, certainly in London, maybe in the world. The range of the work on display was immense. One went from very traditional portraits to modernistic works. War was a traditional subject, but the exhibition had made it a modernist one. Exhibit number 186 was called Canada's Golgotha. It was a bronze sculpture some three foot high by British sculptor Dermot Wood. The image had lost none of its power to shock, leading the Daily Express to describe it as the ghastliest thing in these rooms. The Canadian soldier is really tantamount to Christ on the cross. 
And the Germans, on the other hand, are sacrilegious criminals. You see this wonderful juxtaposition between good and evil. This work served to focus the grief and the sorrow that everyone was experiencing in January 1919. That's why the impact was so great. It was the public indictment of the Germans. It was exhibited just before the Versailles Conference. People were already saying, make Germany pay. And here was a reason why Germany should pay in the sculpture itself. The story had now been immortalized in bronze. But was it true? Freiherr Langwert von Simmen, the German Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, was outraged by press reports about the sculpture. He complained to the British government through the neutral Swiss legation. A very serious allegation is leveled against the German army and spread through the world without any attempt being made to furnish proof of the facts or to give the German government an opportunity to refute the libel. Although the Royal Academy exhibition had no official sanction, the British and Canadian governments rose to the challenge. They launched an investigation at the highest level. The governments thought they could prove that a soldier really had been crucified at Ypres. 